Over the years, many great games have gotten Roll and Write versions. Well, add Cascadia to that list as we have Cascadia Rolling Hills, where you're going to be rolling dice, collecting animals, doing habitat cards. There's two versions. There's Rolling Rivers, Rolling Hills. We're doing Rolling Hills solo for you today after the break. All right, here I am set up for the solo play of Cascadia Rolling Hills. The only difference is there's one of me. So, otherwise it is played exactly the same. So the way that it is played, first we'll say setup. Setup is there's tier 1 and tier 2 cards. You remove one from each land type in tier 1 and tier 2, which leaves uh, 10 of each one. So 20 cards total. You're going to flip over your first one. You're going to get these completion cards and put one in the spaces as such. Spot 1, spot 2, 3, and 4, because eventually you're going to have 4 cards in the row. Each person gets their own personal dice. There's two small dice, one that has a bear symbol on it, and one that has a split symbol. You're going to grab the four communal dice with the red. Each person gets a tally sheet, and you choose an environment map to play on, A, B, C, or D. I am going with B. There's a star rating to show how complex it is. This is a two-star rating. And then, of course, a writing utensil. So, the way the game is going to get played is I am going to roll all of these dice. So we're going to pick them up and roll them out. Now, given from the animals that are left, or the dice that are showing, we are going to then check the central special die, which is that die. See if it pertains at all to the dice. In this instance, we are going to have a minus one Nature token cost when we do these dice actions, which I'll cover here in a second. Right, like right now, because you're going to take a dice action optional. So you can spend your nature tokens, which are shown down here on your tally sheet. For one, you can down convert. You can convert all of one wildlife type to take as the type below it. If you look at our sheet here, this is the levels it goes. Bear down to elk, down to fox, to hawk, to salmon. Or eagle. I think we always mess up with what we call them. So you can do one action of that per round. This one is going to do a minus one, so that one, in essence, would be free. You can up convert, which is the same thing except going up, so like an elk to a bear. You can spend three to take two types, because normally what's going to happen is if you choose, or after you choose whether to or not to do a dice action, you're going to record the collected animals on a tally sheet. You're going to look at them, and you're going to take all of one type. So in this instance, I could take two foxes. If I did, I'd cross off my one, and I'd write three in that spot right there. After that, you're going to see if you can complete a habitat card. In order to complete it, you need to be able to spend two foxes, two eagles, and four salmon. You'll adjust your counts down here. You're going to get the bonus shown here. In this instance, two nature tokens. And then you're going to look at this number right here. This scores differently on each sheet. So this specific sheet, the number that's shown there, I'm going to go to that row of the hexes, and I'm going to outline that many hexes. So in essence, two. As I'm going across, certain things will happen. If there's a little circle with the landmark icon, I'm going to cross it off down here, possibly getting rewards. Or some of them will show an animal, in which instance I'll grab that animal, some will show the nature. I'll get the nature tokens. And that is it for on those. If you fully surround one of these diamonds by doing the hexes, you'll get what's between those. As you're going down here, when you X off this row, each one of these is going to give you a wild animal of your choice. If you complete this row, you're going to be able to cross off a hex of your choice and three points. And as you get down, you're going to choose any one of these to cross off. After we have dealt out all 20 cards, so after 20 rounds, we are going to score points per row based on the farthest hex that we've done. So if I'm here on this one, this will be 10, and then here would be 8, and then if I'm here, it's 15, so forth. You're going to do one for each of those. This is the excess row. If I fully fill up my mount, any row, I would then continue on down to this row. So then points for that. Any bonus points I get for these various ones between the diamonds or down here. And then I'm going to add up any remaining animals and nature tokens I have, divide it by five, total it up, and that is my score. So that's completing a habitat tile and how you do that. When you complete it, 
First, you're gonna see if there's any completion card discounts. We only have one, which is this one. So when you go to do uh, environment card, habitat card, that's there. In this instance, you're gonna roll one of your personal dice, and then you do not pay any animals of that wildlife type. So if this was here, I rolled my die and got a salmon, I would only have to do the foxes and the eagles. Then I'm gonna pay the cost. I'm gonna take the habitat and completion card bonuses down there. I'm going to mark my environment sheet and then any bonuses on here. The card does not go away. It keeps sliding down. If I can do it again, I'll do it again. All right, that is the basics of play. I'll probably do a round or two to get you an idea, and then we'll fast forward to round 20. All right, so this is my first roll. I can down co convert for free, which would be the one elk, which would then give me three foxes, which would get me going pretty good for there. Or I could just use up all my nature tokens and take two types, because it's always good to get bears. Now I think I'm just going to do the down convert for free, which basically turns my any elk I have into foxes. So that's going to be three foxes I'm getting, which puts me now to four on here. I then see if I can complete it. I cannot. Oh, the other card I should say is these bonuses down here. When you complete it, you get whatever bonus is shown below it. In this instance, it's roll one of your personal die, gain the result. This is an animal of your choice. And this one, I can spend two nature tokens to add one to the habitat size. So basically, I can spend two to do another hex. So that's the end of that. So then this card slides down. The next card comes over, and this one's elk and salmon. So we again roll our dice. We got foxes again, another elk, that discount again, you got eagles, you got salmon. Um, so this one is kind of a little hodgepodge of everything. I do I could up convert my foxes to elk this time and get going for that one, which I think we will. So we'll spend one of our nature tokens. To up convert, we're going to up convert our foxes to elk. So now that's three elk. So now I'm at four on there. And that is all I have for that one. One more. We'll see if I can get a habitat card this time. And then I can fast forward. Looking for salmon. Ooh, I got a couple of bears though. And there's the elk. So this would be a really nice one if I had the three to take a bunch of stuff. So I could do a wild, I could do two salmon, which leaves me up for that, and I could even possibly even roll an elk, which would then make me only have to do the salmon. So yeah, we're going to take the salmon. As much as the bears would be nice for future, I need to start getting some of these cards. So we're going to go two salmon, which gives me three. So now we are going to attempt for this card here. So when you roll a die, you can choose because this die has like two foxes, one salmon, one elk, one eagle, and one bear. This one doesn't have a bear, and this one has three instances of salmon, one fox, two instances of eagles, and elk. So you can kind of choose, and maybe one of them might help more. So I think we are going to take... The one that doesn't have foxes, because this has a higher likelihood of giving me a discount on one of those. So roll and subtract. It is salmon, so I don't have to spend the salmon. I just have to spend the four elk. So that's going to give me three. So we go one, two, and three which gives me a salmon and lets me cross off that landmark there. So again, this stays, I've spent all of my resources and now I start on the next round, which I will get started here. Um, I will say what's going to happen next round when I need to slide these down, this card will now get discarded and I will have no longer have access to that. All right, that being said, let me go on with the rest of the rounds.
here I am in the final round with my final roll. And let's see, we got salmon, salmon, couple of foxes, a split, and a wild. So, let's see, where would be the best bet? If I can get one, two, three, four, there's not. So I'm looking at mountains, which is just a couple there. The forest would go one, two, three, and that could trigger a bunch of stuff. The wetlands, one, two, three, four, five. The wetlands would probably be maybe my best bet to do, to do. Five wetlands, that gives me that down there. But what can I even get? So I'm not going to be able to get four bears. So right now I have the one bear, I have two, I need two eagles and two salmon, which I could spend my thing to take two types and take two eagles and two salmon. So I can definitely get that one. This one I need an eagle and a fox, so same thing, I can get that. Um, too far away from that one, I'm too far away from that one. So it's really wetlands or forest. One, two, three... Four, which does let me do a, one of my choice. So we're going to go for, I think, the wetland. So we're going to spend my nature tokens to take two animal types. We are going to take the foxes and the eagles. Then we spend a bear. We spend two... Uh, caribou, deer, whatever you want to call them. We spend the three foxes, the two birdies. And I've been playing it that you can get that first and then use it for that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use those two to kick this up one more. So we're going to be doing five. One. Two. Three. Four, five. So we get that. We got a salmon. So did that. We did that. We get a thing of our choice. We also get to cross off here. And by crossing off there, we get another animal of our choice. So we're just going to kick that up to two. Can't get to the forest because that would be nice to be able to get those five points. So I get a one of my choice, so that's a three-point play. That's a three-point play, one for there and getting that. Same thing there. That gets me an eagle, so that's not worth it. That's a two-point play, so it looks like three-point play regardless. So we're just going to go right here. Right like that, and get that one. All right. So that is it. So now we total up our score. We have 15 across here. We only have 6. We have 10. We have 10. 17. Nothing for this. Bonus is we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 10. 10 bonus points. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's one point for that. So 15, 21, 31, 41, 51, 58, 68, 69 points on the Okanagan map. So that was my first time doing this map. Definitely kind of interesting because you want to try and keep grouping them all together so you can get those bonuses. So I did enjoy this one more so than the initial base one. This base one, you're just filling in the numbers and just going that way. This one kind of has a bit more going on with the combos and such. But that was my solo play of Cascadia Rolling Hills. Hope you enjoyed. Go ahead and like, subscribe, comment, share, and ring the bell down below. I'd appreciate it. And then you can also look for our podcast where podcasts are found to listen to me ramble on more about a plethora of games. So until next time, roll on out.